Hi, 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 and welcome to LNA Does Audio Stuff. In this channel, you learn all things music, music production in a very fun and non intimidating way because I'm not very intimidating. So subscribe because you'll like it here. I know you will. Ableton Live browser window is very straightforward when you're adding plugins or instruments or audio or MIDI effects and samples. But did you know that it also contains some secret features? Today in this video, I will go through some of my favorites, but also we're going to look into some ultimate file management tips and tricks that will honestly make your life so much better and workflow so much easier and faster. So let's get into it now. Tip number one is something that is asked me a lot. So where to save sample packs, plugins and live sets? For me, the answer is very straightforward. External hard drive. I have had so many of them during the years. My favorite one that I definitely recommend is this Lacey external hard drive. You can get the massive sizes, three terabytes, four, you know, as many plugins as you have. In there, I keep my sample packs, my plugin data, my live sets, my videos, everything is an external hard drive. So basically everything that I'm currently working on is on my computer. Everything I need for live performance or any kind of that kind of sessions that needs to be on my computer is on my computer. Everything else is on external hard drives. It keeps your computer empty, your CPU lower and samples in order and file management so much more easier and also backup if your computer breaks. This is how we can benefit from our external hard drives in Ableton Live. So if you have a sample Sample pack and you add it to your external hard drive, you can add that folder from your external hard drive into your browser window. So we go here, add folder, an example sample packs, and then open. Now we have sample packs folder on our browser window. So we can access it directly from our browser. What else I have in here? I have genres. So I've created this drum MIDI clip folder for myself of different genres. You can also go and buy it from the link down below. I also have MIDI bass lines. So just like bass lines that I like using. So it's literally just the MIDI clip that I have created for myself. I just put it in a folder in my external hard drive and now I can access the MIDI clip from this browser window and just drag and drop it everything that I need from here. I also have my favorite clips or sample packs and everything in here. Easy to access. Woo! If you have packs, really good tip and trick is not having the data on your computer. Example, let's go B tools and I go here, move pack, and then I can put a folder here called uh, live packs. Here we go. And now the data of this B tool pack is on my external hard drive and not on my computer. To make sure that it's not your computer, what you need to do is go to the browser window, you go to library, and from here you go location of user library. This is where everything data will be restored on your computer. So this is also a very good point just to kind of check where is the user library and where you can go and tidy it up. Also just the extra tip in this point, when you want to look at different samples here. We can preview them using this headphone logo here. So we can preview it if it's on. We can't if it's not on. And also the headphone logo on the master channel, this is the volume of the preview just so that you know. Tip number two is collections in browser window. It's a really good practice to organize all your sounds, all your samples, all your devices, everything into these collections. Collections you can find from the left top corner of Ableton Live browser window. I have favorites, effects, mix, mastering tools, drum packs, and favorite sounds. So my drum packs is called dumb packs because I'm, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> Where you can edit them is from here, from the edit button. You can also show what categories you want to see here. You can just example, if I don't want to see favorites, I can just put edit and so on, or add it here back to here by clicking the X. Also, you can see a lot of different colors here on the back of my different tools. So example, I, if I go to audio FX, you can see utility has three categories. So how do we add them to these categories? I could go and put example, audio effort racks, love them, right click, add it to favorites. 
add it to FX. Now, if I go to favorites, audio effort rack is my favorites. So I can example just do limitations and just focus on one of these categories, but also I know exactly where everything is so much faster. Also in Ableton Live 11, we have new categories. If we go audio FX, and you can see everything is categorized. If you do not like it, you can actually take it off. Did you know this? We can group in folder. We can also ungroup the folder. <laughs> if you liked how it was before, just ungroup it. Number three is places. Places you can find under categories over here. We have packs, user library, current projects, live projects, blah, 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 so on. We can download packs from Ableton Live website. Also, you can just go here and you can download them directly from here. From plastic example, I could just go here, click download, and then I can install it and put it on my external hard drive. The user library is the default location for items you save yourself. I already showed where to determine it. It's preferences library, the location of user library. Here we have everything example, all my clips that I might want to save into Ableton, but also I have my presets. These are presets that I have created. You can download them from my website from the link down below. But also we have our samples, we have favorites, <laughs> imported ones, and we also have have templates. We also have under places current projects and this is something very important. These are all the currently active project. We have Patreon samples project open so you can see now samples of this project. So if you example need to access these samples La, la, la. you can find them from there or you can see all the tracks of this current project from here. So we already added some, some folders into the places section. So the sample packs example. I also have this folder on my external hard drive called live projects. They are my sketches or songs that I'm currently working on because from here you can example go to easy beat the don't know what that is and we can go to the project and I can drag and drop one of the stems into my current project. How cool is that? But also in 11.1 Ableton Live, I can now go open one of these stems from that project and I can go and just take either just the clip off that track or the devices of that track. So let's say that you have created some amazing vocal chain for a track in one of your sessions and now you don't need to even save it into one audio effect rack or anything. You can just literally open this up and just go and drag the devices or just the clips into your current session. How wonderful is that? Use this places area very well because it will help your life so much. Next one, tip number four is templates and presets. So we can actually save our own templates and Ableton Live 11 gives us actually a template folder here under categories. Also, you can find it in user library and we have templates and we can create our own templates here. So this is one of the best things. So we can actually go here and put a new live sets. Let's not save that. Example, I can go to templates and here I have one already created. So I'm going to open that up. So it just creates this template that I already like. So we have drum track, we have bass track, chord track and melody track. On the master channel, I also have intro, verse and chorus. So it's already set up for me to just start making music. I could adjust this now and I can go to key mapping and then record button. I like having on a key. R. So when I'm recording, I don't need to click from the screen, but I can just press R on my keyboard and it starts recording. So example, that is now added to that template. So I'm going to go file, save, live set as template. New thing, Ableton Live 11, love it. So music production workflow, the best like that. Go to templates and now you can see it here. Can you see that there's this little checkbox next to default live set? Well, I can now put music production workflow the best as the default. So now every single time I open Ableton Live, a new project, new live set, guess what opens up? This set, now when I press R, it starts recording automatically. I don't need to set the keys again and so on. So use the templates in browser window, very 
good tip. We can save templates, but also we can save our presets. So we have presets folder under user library and presets. Let's go example and add an audio effect rack. Let's add example one of these. So we have now this effect rack on our track. Let's say I just created this by myself. I can now save it by using this logo here. I can put it LNA's preset. There we go. It goes under mixing and mastering. So we have preset audio effects, audio effect rack, mixing and mastering, LNS preset. Use these also as much as you can. So you can actually save your audio instrument, drum or MIDI racks, like literally everything. So save as much as you can while you're producing because future you will thank you. And remember, I have also plenty of free and cheap templates, preset samples and MIDI clips you can get for either free or very cheap from my website. Link down below. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Tip top number five is a secret browser arrangement method. Let's go to audio effects. And this is where I love showing this. I'm going to ungroup the folder. Here we go. So I can see all the effects. The top bar will arrange it by a name. If I click it, now it goes from A, B, C, D, blah, blah, blah. If I click it once, it will go opposite. This is how I always thought this is. But no, it's not. Because you can right click the top bar and you can have date modified, size, type, rank, place. So many options. So example, we just had the user library and we just created that preset so I could go date modified and it shows today 1538. So it will help you a lot figuring out when you created things because sometimes we forget. So example type gives me rack presets. Size gives me how big is the size of the preset. Let's go back into audio FX. One of my favorite things is rank. And look at this. If we rank it, we get this measurement here on the right, right? <laughs> and now let's click the rank. You can see that I use EQ8 the most. The second one is auto filter, then limiter, compressor, utility, spectral resonator, chorus ensemble. If you follow my channel, you are not surprised of any of this. <laughs> Especially I love that auto filter is there. Like love auto filter. So you can actually use this when you create your collections, create yourself creative challenges using this. I just freaking love it. So try these different areas here because it's great. I have done plenty of similar type of videos showing the secrets of Ableton Live. I have actually a playlist called All About Ableton Live. I'm linking it just here now. It's a playlist where you will literally learn everything there is to know about Ableton Live and you will learn it in a fun way because I'm fun. Also, thank you so much for all my Patreons who are supporting me, who have fun with me in our Patreon family. Here are all of them. The beautiful, beautiful people. We have Discord, we have weekly live streams. And I also have a mentor tier where I give feedback and business advice to you. Thank you, because you make this possible. So thank you so much. Have a very lovely day and come again. <laughs>